Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Mountainside Podcast. This week is Care for Colorado Week, and we brought in Bridget Cochell from Colorado Parks and Wildlife. This was a great episode. I've intended on getting Colorado Parks and Wildlife in here since episode one, so I was ecstatic that they were able to come in, especially during Care for Colorado Week. This was a great episode. We were able to sit down and talk about some of the basic principles of what you can do when using some of our public lands, all these awesome parks that we have. And one of the things that's really cool about this that I didn't really realize when we were sitting down recording it and we started going through all these different principles, which are very basic, but have huge impacts on the environment. These principles don't just apply to Colorado. You could use them anywhere and make a significant difference. These are some simple things that you can do to help conserve all these great spaces that we have for future generations. That's super important to us here at the Mountainside Podcast. Bridget's a great person. I thoroughly enjoyed sitting down with her, and I hope you enjoy this listen. Hello, Bridget. Hello. I appreciate you coming all the way up here from downtown and uh, hanging out with us today. Absolutely. And I am very, very excited to have Colorado Division of Wildlife in here. Mm -hmm. um, when I originally started this podcast, you guys were going to be our first episode, and it's taken 50 other episodes to go through <laughs> between the pandemic and everything else yeah. to get you guys in here. Well, we're but here I, now. Yeah, I am thrilled to have you here. Yeah, and uh, you know, for our listeners that don't know, um, or maybe just tuning into this thing for the first time, mm -hmm. we are very big on conservation, trying to educate people in a bit of a funny way. We're not experts in anything, I'll guarantee you that, but we do have some experts in like yourself. But we're big on promoting just, you know, treating public land the right way right. and, you know, all the stuff that comes along with that. You know, whether it's getting in and out of your car, uh, being safe, uh, making sure we're not impacting rivers, streams, you know, uh, and even private land, too. Yeah. And we our audience is actually from all over, not just the state of Colorado. Mm -hmm. So I feel like a lot of these principles can apply other places, too, which is absolutely super cool. Yeah. Um, and just to let everybody know what's going on, I'm super stoked that you guys are here and using the Mountainside Podcast as a platform mm -hmm. uh, because it is Colorado, or I'm sorry, Care for Colorado Week yeah. this week, right? Right. So it's actually going to launch on Colorado Public Lands Day, which starts on Saturday, and then it's going to run all through next week. So the 15th to the 22nd. Nice. So it's all about just showing conservation in action and how, how we care for Colorado. How do we care for our public lands and our, our outdoor spaces? And that's what makes Colorado, Colorado is our outdoor lifestyle. That this is a part of why we love this state, why we wanna spend time outside. So really what we're trying to do is just talk about Leave No Trace, talk about how can we balance our love for outdoor recreation with mindful conservation? What are little things that we can do to really make sure that we're keeping our lands, our landscapes clean and preserved for future generations and also beautiful for each other. When we go out to a park, I don't want to see trash on the ground. Right. You know, so it's it's just each of these steps is little things that we can do to show kindness to our outdoor community. Great. So before we get into care for Colorado and all those steps, we're definitely going to go through all of that and cover that, especially with this week being the week to help promote it, right? Right. But, uh, you know, let's tell our listeners a little bit about yourself. Um, you work for the Colorado Division of Wildlife, mm -hmm. if I haven't said it already. <laughs> um, tell them what your role is there and, and what you do for them. Sure. So I'm a public information specialist. So basically what I help do is I write press releases and blogs and social media. And my biggest mission is to talk about everything that's going on with Colorado parks and wildlife. So anything that we have going on with our state parks, our wildlife, conservation, recreation, I get to talk about all of that stuff. And this is my dream job. So Perfect. my background is in communication and I'm a writer, I'm an editor, I'm a photographer. I love the outdoors. And so... This is my dream job, and <laughs> <laughs> I just get to talk about outdoor spaces and wildlife. That's so awesome, and I'm stoked to have you on here because we're into all those things, photography, yeah. <laughs> it, it all kinds of runs of the gamut. So, <laughs> That's it. 
how did you get into this? Did you know when you were from a young age that you wanted to be work for Parks and Wildlife or work for Colorado Division of Wildlife? Are you a native to here? Like, so I'm not. So okay. in 2010, I came out for a Red Rock show, and the music scene definitely pulled me out. And a lot then, of people don't know it. That's our hook. Just like there's a hook in yeah. a song. Red Rocks is the hook to yeah. uh, Colorado. Yeah. So. so it was being there, live music, feeling the energy, feeling what it's like to be in Colorado. And so I'm originally from D.C. So getting on the plane, going back to D.C., and I love D.C. I'm not saying anything bad about East Coast. Well, we just bashed the, sh- <laughs> the crap out of Philly the other day. <laughs> <laughs> right, Jeremy? <laughs> So, oh no, you're talking. About. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy's from Philadelphia, so Philly, <laughs> Philly's a tough city. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta really hold your own in Philly for yeah. sure. Um, but yeah, so came out to Colorado, started coming out every year, wanted to go to different parks, uh, national parks, state parks. Fell in love with it, and there was this pool of I need to live here, and so. I was working for the Food and Drug Administration for a while and then just realized my hobby on the weekends is spending time outside. I like taking pictures. I like feeling the energy. I like just nature, immersing myself in nature. And I saw the opportunity for Colorado Parks Wildlife. I went for the interview. I got it. I manifested it because I wanted it so bad. And... Just it's it's a part of my professional life gets to be part of my personal life. And like this doesn't feel like work right now. Well, I hope not here. No, not at all. Like this That's is so much about fun. This podcast is it doesn't feel like work for me. But you're saying in general, just no matter what you're doing for them. Right. Every day when I go to work. I Isn't have that fun. the goal? Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's life. Yeah, yeah. That's life. I don't feel like I'm working a day at all. I get to go on mountain lion releases and uh, bear cubbing events and cleaning up at state parks. And the staff that I work with, everyone's incredible. Everyone has a story. People have been with the agency their whole career. So three decades. Yeah. And they have the coolest stories to tell. And now that the pandemic's over, we can all go get drinks and we're vaccinated and sit around campfires and go camping together. Yeah. And it's awesome. Kumbaya right there. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's great. No, we've had some uh, agents on in the past or a former yeah. agent, Perry Will, amazing guy. And mm-hmm. we had a blast with him, man. He's one of our most downloaded podcasts, actually, too. Cool. Um, but super cool guy. And uh, anybody that I've ever ran into that works for Colorado Division of Wildlife, mm-hmm. I've, I can personally say I've never had a bad experience. That's great. I love yeah. hearing that. And I'm a bow hunter. I'm out. I mean, I grew up here mm-hmm. I, as a kid. We didn't have – I grew up pretty poor. We didn't have a whole lot. I mean, mm-hmm. I can remember our, our TV having like – you only got one or two stations in the mountains. And it was like the old rotary dial. We didn't have I didn't have cable either. a microwave. Yeah, we didn't have, okay. and I was just like, just go outside and play. You know, yeah. it was like sticks, go pine explore. cones, you Figure know, it out. all that sort of stuff. Right. We were using is like guns and toys, <laughs> and uh, you know. So I feel very connected to here, mm-hmm. and I ran into a lot of those guys because I was constantly fishing or hunting or just in some sort of park. Mm-hmm. And I, uh, I don't think people realize how much public land is in the state of Colorado. And we're going to get into that here in a minute, but yeah. I want to know, um, I'm a little confused in it and I just want to clarify it for our listeners too. Who is uh, care for Colorado intended for to target? Mm-hmm. Uh, because we get a ton of tourists here, right? Right. So uh, from, from my understanding, it's not just the residents. It's more for those people that are coming in. Maybe they've never visited, mm-hmm. uh, an area like this or the Rocky mountain region and they're new to hiking. They're new to, they're just new to the whole entire experience. Right. Right. So care for Colorado was put together by the Colorado tourism office. And, and it is this, um, people that come into our state, we want to make sure that they're safe when they're outdoors. So part of that's the know before you go where you might be on the front range and you're feeling the heat and then you're going out in the mountains 
and you're not prepared. You're not bringing the water that you need. You're not, you don't have the right jacket. You don't have the right shoes. So there is this educational piece that people have to understand that maybe we take for granted because we've lived here for so long. Sure. But for, I know when my friends come and they get off the airplane, I'm like, drink water, drink water. You got to bring water. You got to bring water. Hence why I'm drinking water right now. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. We're always thirsty. Yeah. Um, That we have great beer in this state. So, you know, (laughs) but yeah, it's really, it's an, it's an educational piece. Um, We saw with the pandemic record high visitation at all of our state parks. That's crazy. Right. So some people for the first time, everything was closed. The only thing that we had was nature. You could go to nature and you could feel comfortable and normal again. With that, some people were experiencing the outdoors for the first time. And so this campaign is interesting because it's kind of teaching people who are new to the outdoors little safety tips as well sure. of what well, they should do. Like I said, I'm a Colorado native, mm-hmm. grew up in the woods and, mm-hmm. and all that stuff. And I mean, there's some points on here, whether you're a native or not, that mm-hmm. it's just a good refresher. Yeah. Whether or not, or to show to your kids, maybe your kids don't know, maybe right. you haven't shot, showed them or taught them yet, you know? Yeah. So, so yeah, there is definitely, uh, these principles apply anywhere too. That's the cool thing. Like, mm-hmm. like I said, you know, we have a ton of listeners here in the state of Colorado, mm-hmm. but we also have listeners out of the country, a lot in the Rocky mountain region. So these, these same rules can apply anywhere that you're at, whether you're in the Alps, right. the Smoky mountains, the Sierras, northern montana you know Mm -hmm. wherever so yeah it's just being cool in the outdoors how do you don't just take the pictures and put them on the on instagram what can you do to take that step further picking up trash just basic how do we leave the land better than we found it sure and you growing up in this state, it's interesting if your parents kind of taught you those basic things. yeah i learned all that stuff and that's one of the things that's one reason why I started this podcast because I was seeing a gap there. And I think that that's the gap that you guys are trying to fill with this is I was taught all that stuff. I was taught how to put out a campfire and, Mm -hmm. and how to clean up after myself Mm -hmm. and how to, how to treat the wilderness. So when you came back, it was Mm -hmm. there. I was always taught, you know, leave it better Mm -hmm. than when you showed up. And if you didn't, I mean, I, I don't want to get any child abuse cases going or anything, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was going to get my ass whipped. Get the you know? switch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, yeah, I'm a city. So I'm from the city. So DC. And yeah. so when I came out here, I had to learn all of this stuff. Right. And I'm glad I did. Now I know it. Yeah. But, yeah. And it's crazy because like, if you just pull up here for the first time, like you said, your friends or you, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm a little bit different because I was raised here and I was always going with my parents or my father figures or something like that. And they were, you know, make sure your jacket's in your backpack before Mm -hmm. we start hiking because we're going to climb 3000 feet in elevation. The weather's going to be different when we Mm -hmm. get to the top or it can change in a heartbeat. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so just simple things like that. And that's one thing that you guys are all covering. Um, but let's go ahead and dive into those seven things. Um, I'm calling them the seven commandments because I don't know. <laughs> what would you call them? The seven rules or Princi- it's not a- Leave no trace principles. Okay, there we go. That sounds seven way better. Seven ways to care for Colorado. Uh, it's always seven. Like there's seven steps, seven, you know, like, <laughs> but no, but um, it's good that we cleared that up. So the seven principles and uh, the first one is just know before you go, right? right. And I'm going to let you explain this because you are the expert, but <laughs> what all does this entail? So like you said, it's knowing the weather ahead of time, having the extra layers, bringing water, food, knowing about trail closures. Sometimes it's it's all about really planning and thinking about your adventure before you're you're going to go on it, making sure that you're going to be safe. We don't want anyone, um, you know putting themselves in a dangerous situation where search and rescue have to be called. It's sure. really thinking about everything of what time you're going to get there, whether do you have the right gear? Sure. That's a big thing. And a lot of times too, these spaces where you're going, you might have self service in the parking lot, but mm-hmm. you get in that next Ridge or the Canyon or something. You might not have this as a safety blanket to call somebody. Right. So, and I've had that before too, where I've been at a state park yeah. and I thought I was going to bring up my GPS And it didn't work and i had to bust out a map and find my way to to get back to the main road 
So we've and, all made these mistakes, and I don't want us to sound preachy. I want it to be more of oh, believe me, I've made so many mistakes <laughs> in my life, and especially in the outdoors, where I'm like, that was really stupid. Yeah. Why did I do that? You know? Yeah, you learn from it, you grow. Yeah. yeah. All right, do me a favor, just pull that mic just a little bit. Yeah, yeah there you go. Okay. Just a Am I drifting? Closer. You can drifting off. Yeah, it's all right. It's scary when it's just like right in your face. I, um, I'm a <laughs> I, I'm a singer, so I should know, oh, but. Okay. <laughs> no, it's way better. Okay. Um, yeah, and I think, you know, one of the things that you can always do, and uh, I know like Jefferson County Open Space is mm-hmm. really good with this, um, not at all the parks, but a lot of times there is a map yep. posted at a trailhead, right, that'll sh- kind of show you. Right. You can either snap a photo of that with your phone, mm-hmm. and, um, you know, then you're relying on your phone battery. Yeah. But you guys also offer paper maps there a lot of the times too. So grab one of those, throw it in your backpack. Even if you've been a hundred times, you know, uh, a lot of them are topo maps, which are awesome. Right. And then, uh, you know, I always travel, especially when I'm hunting, like I have a GPS that I take. And if you can afford a little Garmin or or one of these badass GPS systems that are out there, a tracking system Mm -hmm. that has an SOS some sort of button on it that's great you shouldn't rely on that either i also tend to especially when i'm hunting whatever area i'm hunting in i love those national geographic maps Mm -hmm. because of the material if they get wet they don't fall apart right um and a compass and just learning some navigation there's a ton of schools out here where you can learn navigation having a compass is so important so important so if you do get turned around like and those are simple things to carry like yeah not, it's not heavy in your backpack. It's not a big deal. Exactly. Uh, we also have a, a Cotrex app for our state. And oh, so okay. if anyone feels they've showed up at a trailhead and it's closed, they can use that app and try to find a local park or path or new trail that they could go explore. So there's all kinds of resources out there. Again, it's that knowing before you go, really planning it out. Sure. Another thing is anything in backcountry, really telling people where you're going. Because say that you're going out, you're going somewhere by yourself. It's good that a buddy or a family member knows where you're going in your general direction and when you're coming back. As specific as you can get. I mean, yeah. when I was talking about getting my butt kicked, <laughs> that was one of the rules. It was like, you better tell us where you're going and when and when you plan on being back. Like mm-hmm. as a kid, I could go camp by myself, but I had to be back by a certain yeah. time. And like your parents sound yeah. very cool. They were awesome. <laughs> I didn't grow up with a dad, but I grew up with amazing grandfathers and uncles and stuff like that. That, that sounds just fantastic. Showed me the ropes. So yeah. super fortunate in, in that realm. Um, if somebody like as far as trail closures, or I know with Colorado getting so popular right now, especially mm-hmm. with people have time to travel, mm-hmm. people are going to more remote places. They're getting away from other people as much as possible. Um, I know that some of the state parks, like up around Aspen and stuff, there's a permit that you have to have to even enter the park Mm -hmm. or access a trail. Um, Sometimes there's trail closures because of animal migrations and that sort of thing. Where can people get that information and know before they go? Yeah. So I think... I would always go to the individual park or trail website pages. I would I would go and because I know with state parks, anytime that there's a closure, it's immediately going to be on that individual parks page. Okay. So with some of these things with Mount Evans, for example, I mean, this is outside a state park. We, we don't manage Mount sure. Evans, but there is a reservation system. So I just always recommend that people Google where you're going and look into it online. Sure. So each specific park is almost like its own entity as yes. far as a website. Yes. And then is there a directory where you can find all those? Is there like CPW's yes. website or something like yeah, that? Yeah. So we have a park finder page on our website. So you can go see all 42 state parks. You can see all 350 state wildlife areas. And then it directs you to each of those individual pages. You can see closures, trails, activities that can be done in each park. And that's where you can get your OHV for an off-road vehicle. Right. Hunting licenses, mm-hmm. fishing. Exactly. You can do all that stuff online. It's a- super everything's awesome. Everything's online. And then of course if you don't wanna if you want to talk to our friendly park people, you can always just give us a call. Yeah. You <laughs> sometimes you guys call me, which is cool too. So <laughs> <laughs> no, I always get the end of the call at the end of hunting season and I'm really bad about picking up the first one because I'm like, what is this number? And then 
after you guys it's leave your friendly park folk. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's awesome. So rolling on to step number two is stick to the trail. Um, this is something that we're all guilty of. I'm a backcountry bow hunter, so mm-hmm. there's not always a trail where I go. But uh, I, I saw something on here that I had no idea, and this is super cool. There's 39,000 or over 39,000 marked trails and 13,000 designated campsites across the state. We're very lucky to live here. It's crazy. <laughs> and it, isn't it something like, uh, I saw something, it was like uh, f- 40% of the state is public land. I'm terrible is with that, numbers, but okay. yeah. Jeremy, is that something you can look up for us? Like, what's the percentage of public land available in Colorado to access? I know we have like, I want to say it was 750. Peter just locked up. Yeah. <laughs> so it's uh, capital C. It's Colorado 1. And the only the C is capitalized. You're going to want to edit that one out, dude. <laughs> yeah, everybody's going to break in here to hack into my computer and <laughs> shut down a pipeline. <laughs> Oh shit! It's wait, not wait funny. Actually, given yeah. his yeah. password over on oh air. God, oh hilarious. man! Wait, no, wait a second. You just you just lost me. Uh, so I want to know how much of the state is um, public land. So like percentage wise. So I think it's like forty percent or something. Just you can chime in once we get there. So sticking to the trails. Mm-hmm. What what are you guys? What's your idea of sticking to the trails? I guess. So for me, it is well for us. It's staying in the middle of the trail, following the trail, on switchbacks, not taking those shortcuts, not stepping on plants. With the pandemic, it was really interesting because people were widening the trails to try to do that social distance, but we really don't want to do that. So the advice would be to wear your mask and just be respectful to people on trails and don't step on any vegetation, don't widen that trail. Um, it's also the etiquette of not blasting music on trails, being sure. respectful of other people. The people that are coming up the trail technically get the right of way. I know personally, sometimes I'm really out of breath and I will just communicate to the other person, go on by, it's totally fine. Right. Uh, so it's just having that open communication and trying to not step off the trail as much as you can. Okay. Um, that's 43, yeah. 43%. Ooh, so you were Dude, right. You nailed it more wow. than 40%. Nice. Yeah. I knew I read that someplace. Um, yeah. Sticking to the trails is great. Um, what, you know, I, this is a little bit off subject from what we're talking about here, mm-hmm. but you know, speaking of sticking the trails and noise on the trails, mm-hmm. I've definitely noticed it, you know, uh, and I'm not saying that you have to be totally silent out there, but I've heard people Play communicating music. really oh, okay. loud playing mm-hmm. music maybe that sort of thing mm-hmm. how has that impacted the wildlife so i noticed like right. this year when i was elk hunting the elk were super quiet mm-hmm. not a whole lot of bugling right which is for a bow hunter that's a bummer, that's a um, bummer yeah and uh i have heard and i don't know firsthand but the calf rates have have mm-hmm. diminished a little bit just because of the impact or that frequency that those elk are seeing all the time right. deer everything yeah i think it's important to know when you're on a trail and you're in nature you're not alone we're we have our wild neighbors there they they can hear everything that we're doing if we're loud and screaming and playing music that's not appealing to them and they're going to drift off and want to get away from those trails and the negative side of that is then you're not going to be able to see as much wildlife sure and there has to be that level of coexistence of you stick to your trail you go about your business, they're going to go about theirs. So you can, t- of course, you can talk to your friends, but you shouldn't be screaming or blasting a boombox. Like, right. You shouldn't do that. Some people need to go into nature to disconnect and to hear the sounds. And there's that. That's l- me. Yeah, right. To ground yourself, yeah. the mental benefits, the health benefits. So it's, again, it's that coexistence of how do you be respectful to each other and the community. And that's an important but thing. But this is one of the things that you guys are asking. So mm-hmm. if you find somebody with a boom box and you're a park ranger, do mm-hmm. you, can you bust them? I mean, like, 
What's the? I don't know if they give it. I mean, we're. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't really work that way our huh? staff is very friendly yeah. i think you'll get like a nice warning sure. of hey come on can you k- keep it down i've been camping before where people are blasting their music into the night it's a bummer it's not something you really want so if someone was to complain then yeah our rangers would come over and say please be considerate of other people and i think that this is also a misconception I think that the, a lot of people just can see with all this public land mm-hmm. that there's hundreds of people taking care of it and there's, you know, park rangers everywhere. Well, mm-hmm. there's really not. I mean, right. a lot of the people that manage these wildlife areas or wilderness areas, it's pretty sparse and they have a large territory to cover, correct? Yeah, I want to give a little plug again to sure. <laughs> my my colleagues. Visitation went up by Thirty percent. We hit record numbers of visitation, so we knew people wanted to get outside. Our staff worked really hard to make sure that all of our parks were open, but to have to pick up tons of trash after people—that's not their full-time jobs. They're right. making sure that the trails are well kept, that the facilities are well kept, that the visitor centers are staffed, that if if there's an emergency situation, that they're taking care of someone who's in danger uh the wildlife conservation our wildlife officers are out there you are responsible for your own trash yeah it's, not it's yeah, i mean they're, not, they're think, not there to empty the trash cans yeah there's no ma- cleaning person on a trail sure. coming behind you picking up your trash it's it's just it's like would you throw trash in your backyard no yeah colorado is our backyard these are our spaces our outdoor spaces so yeah, you know, be cool. Pick up after yourself. <laughs> and then uh, another part of like sticking to designated areas, whether it's a trail or a campsite, right? A lot of those, when it comes to um, water, so like say you're camping on a lakefront, which there's a ton of awesome lakes that you can camp at. Mm-hmm. Um, if you, correct me if I'm wrong, like if you're bathing yourself or if you have one of those awesome outdoor showers or anything like that you're mm-hmm. supposed to be 200 feet away from that water right that's correct so you're not impacting the river with fish with like soap suds and right and there's a lot of bio bio friendly soaps out there specifically for camping and hunting right that sort of thing um that's but so still true. those you right. want to use 200 feet from the water exactly yeah we don't want to muddy up the water think of friends as you know fish as friends but they don't want the bubble bath. That's not cool. So, yeah, yeah if you're going to use the water, be be clean. Um, there's also a lot of stuff that you can buy where there's jugs of water where you can kind of wash yourself off by yourself without having to get in the streams and the creeks. Yeah. So that's another option. Those solar showers are awesome, man. Yeah. Like when I'm elk hunting, and sometimes in September it can yeah. be super hot. Sometimes it can snow too, <laughs> but it's nor- normally one extreme or the other. And you just throw that on the hoodie or truck. Mm-hmm. And when you come back, if it's been sitting there all day, it's amazing how yeah. warm it is and how good yeah. that feels. You know. Yeah. So. Also, be dirty. Get yeah. in nature. It's fine. It's all right to be it's, dirty. It's okay to be dirty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let's move on to number three. What do we got for number three? Leave it as you find it. Okay. So it, it touches back on what you were saying of how you were taught, leave the land better than you found it and being extra respectful. And with that is don't stack rocks. Don't pick the wild flowers. I, I see those little rock towers everywhere I go. Yeah. Uh, I'm a, yeah. They're cool on Instagram, but. Yeah. yeah. Again, like, okay, you have a cool Instagram photo. Does that make you Colorado cool? No. Because yeah. I look at that and think. That's not really cool. Right. <laughs> That's not the way. The other thing, too, is the carving of names and trees. Yep. We don't want to do that. I feel like that's a very 70s thing, you know? Yeah. I I wonder if it's, you know, when you get a tattoo of someone's name and then it's kind of a jinx. I wonder if it's like that with the tree. You think so? You put the you put your name on the tree and then the relationship's not going to last, right. but the tree's going to outlast the relationship. Right. <laughs> you know, I, I dibble dabble in photography as well. It's one of my uh, passions, I guess. I, and one of my pet peeves is when I go and like take photos of aspens in the fall or whatever. Mm-hmm. And you have this beautiful landscape and everything. And I try to get it to where mm-hmm. it looks like no humans ever touched it. But then you're looking at the aspen trees and it'll be like a big heart with like, yeah, you know, 
Jerry I, loves <laughs> Tina or whatever in it, you know? <laughs> yeah. I love in Aspen's the eyes on the trees. Yeah. That makes me think they have souls right. and they're looking at us. So, yeah. So we have so many different species here of plants, mm -hmm. um, that sort of thing. So leave it as you found it is, you know, being respectful of those, considering those as living things, right? Correct me if I'm exactly. wrong. Exactly. Yeah. And then, um, you know, pick up after yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Like even if you're in a designated campsite, don't leave your trash in the fire pit. Mm hmm I don't know how many times I've pulled into a campsite, whether it's designated or not. Right. And people have left, you know, just trash in the in the fire pit. I don't want to burn your trash. Yeah. And I don't want to pick it up either. So. And that kind of goes back. It goes to the pack it in, pack it out of if you are at a campsite and you can't find a dumpster or a trash can. Technically, the outdoor etiquette is that you are supposed to pack everything up, put it in your car and take it out with you. And then as soon as you see a trash can, you throw it out that way. Sure. So this might get a little bit gross, but I want to bring this up because this is something that nobody ever touches on. Um, if you have to use the restroom and you're outdoors, you're on one of these trails. Right. There's some etiquette to that. And this is what I see the most. And I mm -hmm. really feel like this is not, this is people that are, are just not educated. Right. Um, when it comes to you, the outdoors, I'm not calling them stupid. I'm not. Everybody has to go to the restroom, right? Right. But just leaving your toilet paper on the ground, and especially if you've been camping and you can see everywhere around mm -hmm. that you've gone to the bathroom for the last three days or whatever. It's gross. It's super gross. Yeah. What What does Parks and Wildlife want you to do with paper? Mm -hmm. I know that they sell camp paper that's super biodegradable. Mm hmm I was always taught to dig a hole and then bury yeah. it and cover it up so nobody comes along and steps in it. Right. Do your dog doesn't come around and roll in it or eat it, right? right. Like Yeah, I, and it it's to the people's it's to your comfort level of what you feel comfortable with. If if people feel comfortable with going the hole route and be digging a hole far away from a trail, 6 inches deep, doing your business, covering it up do not leave toilet paper behind then there you go that that's completely acceptable for other people there's all this equipment that you can buy where there's buckets and bags and tents sure where you can create your own bathroom your own outhouse if you will and it's kind of your own little safe space in your zone and then when your camping trip's over put up the bag, toss it out, or close the bucket, and then take it out with you. Again, it's, it, I mean, it's the pack it in, pack it out. <laughs> you yep. know, it, there is an etiquette to it. You don't want to be that person with just toilet paper everywhere. That's gross. So Super disgusting. That's my number one pet peeve. And I know I'm going on a rant here, but, <laughs> but that pisses me off, literally. Yeah. yeah. And then, of course, with the, the dog poop bags as well. That's you, another pet peeve of ours here. And trust me, I, I've been on hikes before where I'm 20 minutes in, my dog goes to the bathroom, and then I have to double, triple bag it and put it in a waterproof bag. My trick is I do a dryer sheet, and I have the dryer sheet so it doesn't smell so mm. bad. And it has to go in my backpack, and I hook it to the outside of my camelback. And it's annoying, but it's the pack in, pack out. And then depending on when he goes to the bathroom, sometimes I'll hook it up to his his little harness. And yeah, then it's no. teaching him, too, of your... My dog's got <laughs> one of those little tactical harnesses that was yeah. gifted to me. So Let them Super do their cool. part, yeah. too. It's got little bungees on it. You just yeah, clip it on there. And that's fine. Yeah, they're cool. She doesn't care. <laughs> yeah, she's doing her part. <laughs> yeah, she's just happy to be outside and on a trail. So, <laughs> All right, so moving on to number five. I think we covered number four is trash, right? Yes. Okay. We've covered that. Yeah. Um, okay. So wait, we're on number four. Or we're okay. going to number yeah, five. Yeah. Well, we kind of just skipped from three to four to, and now we're on five, I think. Yeah. There's I don't know. We naturally went to trash. Yeah. It was just like, the there we, we just are, knew it was yeah. next. <laughs> <laughs> Subconscious mind kicking in here. Yeah. Uh, number five is be careful with fire. God, how important is this? I mean, last summer, those wildfires, that was scary. It was insane. We have a dry climate. And I know when I went camping, really have to look up 
the bands. If there's a fire ban, do not set a fire. And it can be super confusing. I'm I'm telling this to everybody, I, even mm-hmm. myself. I get confused when it comes to the fire bans because it's by county. And then a lot of times in wilderness areas and stuff, you don't quite know where that county line is. Mm -hmm. I would just say, you know, pick your closest county and try to figure out what the fire restrictions are there. Right. And then just be careful, man. Make sure you're putting out your fires and that sort of thing. I think that's a huge deal here. Yeah. And and I like I like the lesson, too, of you really you use water to put out the coals. And if, if you can't pick them up it's too hot and you have to sit there until it's out all the way. It takes a lot of water to drown a campfire. Yeah, it takes a while. And then when I wasn't sure when I went to certain state parks, I would just ask the rangers, can I can I have a fire here? Sure. Uh, where can I go get wood? Where's the best place? And they helped me out. So it's completely fine. What is What are the rules with that? If, if there's dead downfall on the ground, can you pick it mm-hmm. up and burn it? Can you, can you go hack down a tree and... Definitely. Burn that. I wouldn't. Ha- I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't cut down a tree. But okay. if there was anything on the ground of sticks, I did ask the rangers, and they would kind of point out certain areas of what I could use. Uh-huh. But I did purchase wood at a local shop that was up the road, and it's it's good for them with the economy and helps them out. And I think that that's a big thing too. Is a lot of campsites, if you go to de- a designated one, um, and this is super important. I feel like. Because we've seen what beetles do and mm-hmm. what they've done to Colorado yeah, is insane. Like if you go to Grand Lake and just look up on the mountain and now most of that's no. burned, right? It's so sad. But um, it's insane what the beetles have done, like the beetle kill that comes in. Mm-hmm. And that was all from just people bringing in their yeah. own firewood or whatever. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times at those campsites, they'll have firewood for you to buy or try to buy it locally, right? Right, right. that's the best way to do it. And then okay. you're not bringing in any critters with you too across state lines. Sure. We don't need any of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think uh, another thing to bring up here too, and not to beat up all the smokers out there, but a, a few of those fires last year were started from cigarettes, right? Like yes. being thrown out of car windows. Right. Or maybe just throwing on the ground, right? I mean, that's basically you're holding a piece of fire. Yeah, I'm not a smoker, but that drives me nuts. Because if you just look out in the summer how dry things are, and you're going to throw out a cigarette, but that's not good for anybody. Like, we have to, again, it's a respect piece. And it's trash. Right. Like, come on, don't throw your trash on the ground. Yeah. That's not good. Back to the trash. Yeah. (laughs) Number four is a huge one. Um, So I think another thing, too, that I was taught from a young age was just like, you know, don't leave your fire just to burn out. Like, put it out before you go to bed. Like, anticipate, right? Like, don't throw a bunch of wood on it and then be like, oh, all of a sudden I'm tired, right? Mm -mm. Like, I was always taught, like, okay, we're going to let this burn out or you got to stay up until it burns out. Right. And then you got to put it out before you actually go to bed. because. Especially like if you're in a spot like the flat tops or, or something like that, um, you can get these micro bursts of wind and we all know that oxygen feeds fire. Yeah. And I made a mistake uh, last, it was two years ago. We were at the flat tops camping. Mm-hmm. The fire was completely burned out. Nice, beautiful, calm night. Drowned it, right? Probably not as much as we should have. Okay. Go, I get in my camper, my uncle's in his tent, and all of a sudden it was like Armageddon hit. And it Whoa. was like torrential downpour, rain. Now the fire was fine okay, because it was raining, yeah. but it was just crazy wind. Well, one of the gusts of wind blew a camp chair into the fire pit, and there was still enough hot stuff in there and enough oxygen that it ignited the fi- the, the chair. Whoa, so I had to go out, gotta like, in the middle the of the un- night. Yeah, I was unexpected. like, what the hell? Yeah, like- <laughs> Lost a chair. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's actually a good tip then. If yeah. you're going to have a fire, enjoy it, embrace it, be careful with what's surrounding it as well, or it can land in the fire. That's right. So <laughs> put, put away your camp chairs before you go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so number six is keep wildlife wild. So this is super important to me. Um, I see a lot of people doing this. And um, growing up here, like one of the things that I f- makes me feel so connected to Colorado mm-hmm. is I grew up in a family full of bow hunters and like hearing an elk bugle yeah. or seeing deer or seeing a mountain lion or 
which is very, very rare. Mm -hmm. Um, or seeing that wildlife, you know, do what it naturally does Mm -hmm. is awesome to me. And that was really disheartening last year to not hear elk bugle. So, yeah. So yeah, this is important. What, what's your guys' principles when it comes to like, what's the best ways to keep wildlife wild? So right now we all have to be very careful with respecting the young wildlife. This next generation's being born right now in the spring. And it's so important not to approach wildlife, leave them alone, coexistence. Not to mention you can get really hurt. That's normally when people get yeah. hurt, right? Yeah. So okay. definitely with moose, you could see a baby moose and then you don't see where the mom is. And if you, if anyone was to try to approach it, that mom's going to come charging. Sure. And that's super dangerous. So the best thing is to just honestly leave them alone. It's the nicest thing that you can do. Admire them from afar. Be grateful, appreciative that we live in this state with 960 different species of wildlife. Really? Yeah, there's so many. I love this state. I love this state. But the the best thing is it's that respect piece. It's, It's really just don't approach them. Do not feed them. They're born to live a wild life. They're in the wild. They're going to do their thing. Let's let them do their thing. Yep. And that's it. If you see, I mean, wildlife photographers, they have huge lenses. They're really far back. You might look on Instagram and see these amazing pictures of wildlife, but they're not up close to the wildlife. They're far away. I can tell you it's dangerous, especially even around here, like around the lake. And you know how many people visit this lake that's mm-hmm. right here. There's elk and they calf and they calf close to the lake because mm-hmm. there's a water source right. and there's great food and they right. got awesome spot to hang out, golf course and mm-hmm. the lakefront. But there's a lot of people that get chased by their mothers, you know? Like, yeah. Yeah. Even the geese. Right. <laughs> I, don't, I don't mess with geese. Yeah. I do not mess with the geese. But they're having their babies and again, it's just, it's kind of like a, hey friend from afar and leave it be. Yep. And that, on trails too, even apple cores, not leaving any of that behind. Sure. Because if, if we leave any food source on our trails, little critters can come. And then when little critters come, bigger critters can come. Sure. So it's all food, just keep it to yourself. They don't need to be fed by humans. Yeah. That was a big thing too last year that we struggled with a little bit. Um, people feeding deer on their deck. Yeah, that's... We don't want that. We had somebody in our neighborhood doing it. Mm-hmm. It was like, I, crazy enough, uh, I'll tell you a little story, and this is kind of, it's not in a wilderness area. It's all on private land. Mm. Super nice old lady that lives down the road, feeding deer down the road. I'm pretty sure. I don't know, but the deer are always in her yard, mm. always. Okay. And uh, funny enough, I all of a sudden, in the middle of the afternoon, my daughter goes, dad, there's a deer on our deck and our deck is elevated. Ooh. And he walked up to our sliding glass window like, hey, what are you going to give me? You know, mm-hmm. like, but that's the thing. They're seems, learning. They're, yeah. They learn humans are a food source. And, and what's scary with that is they can become aggressive. Sure. And again, they're wild animals. We don't know what they're going to do. And right. that's, that's what started to happen is people thought, well, I'm feeding them. I'm doing the nice thing. But then they become aggressive. And we even, I mean, bears are smart. They know how to get into people's houses. And they're so silent, too. Yeah. They know yeah. how to get into people's cars. So bear proofing is going to be another huge topic for sure. when you're on a trail, making sure that your food isn't, you can't smell anything. When you're camping, you better put that food away, better lock up your cooler. Yeah. We've seen bears break into coolers. Oh yeah, they know how to push coolers down. They break the hill. into cars every yeah. summer, you know. Yeah, like, they can yeah. smell gum, and yeah. get in a car. They're very smart. Yeah. So again, it's it's that understanding neighbor our wild neighbors, and just leaving them alone, keeping them wild. Keeping them wild means letting them have a wild life, and us not getting involved. Okay, I'm going to go on one more rant here. and I, I love rants. I can't promise this will be the last one. <laughs> I love rants. This is another thing that really <laughs> irks me is, well, a couple different reasons. And when you're on a trail and you're hiking, a lot of times I'm out to get exercise or something like that. Mm-hmm. And everybody's, there's a lot of people with dogs. Yeah. 
Colorado. lot of people, when they get out on these trails and they see this big open space, mm -hmm. they take their dog off the leash mm. and it chases wildlife. And I yeah. honestly think that that's part of uh, some of the elk stuff that we were seeing last year is just like, not only are you a human now and you're taking up this little bit of frequency area, but now you have a dog that's running, you know, 30 yard circles around you and exploring everywhere. Yeah, we don't want that. That sort of thing. Or maybe chasing something. Um, or biting you, somebody. That's how you I, piss I, off moose. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've almost been bitten a couple times actually too. And that's why, that's oh. another reason. Like, cause I go out running and, um, you know, you can come up on somebody pretty fast and if their dog's off leash, they might think that mm. you're attacking them or whatever. So they're just trying to protect their owners. They're just doing what a dog naturally does. Right. right? But. Yeah, let's let's stay away from that. Let's keep our <laughs> let's keep our dog friends on leashes. Yeah, out of respect again for wildlife. I mean, it's posted everywhere too. Like right. that's what I don't understand too. So yeah, you can get a ticket so for that people. in a park for sure if you don't have a dog on a leash. And then again, that goes to the no before you go. There are some parks where you're not allowed to have dogs, and that's At because all, huh? of the wildlife. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's just not a good idea. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um. So seven. What is seven? Jeremy, you might have to pull this up. <laughs> <laughs> Share our trails and parks. Oh, uh, okay. Here we go. <laughs> so this kind of goes back to the principles, uh, or I'm assuming it goes back to the principles of, I should probably should have read this before the podcast. <laughs> this fine. goes back to the principles of like, don't be playing your boombox going down the trail, right? That yeah. sort of type of thing and make it peaceful for other people. Yeah, it comes back to the Colorado community of why do we love living in this state? Because we have an outdoor lifestyle. And with that, we have a responsibility to balance outdoor recreation with mindful conservation. How do we show respect for each other? being acting a certain way and being respectful on trails. And so following each of these principles is just acknowledging that not to be selfish when you're outdoors. We're all trying to enjoy everything the outdoors has to offer. We have to respect that people want to experience the outdoors in different ways. Like you said, you like going out in nature to zone out. You don't want to hear what music I'm listening to. You might not like the music that I'm listening to. You don't want my dog running up to you on a trail. You know, yeah. so it's that basic coexistence respect. I don't mind a dog running up to me. I'm not a dog hater as long as they're friendly. <laughs> right, funny. Jeremy? My dog bites Jeremy only. Yeah, your dog's <laughs> not a fan of mine. <laughs> I think she's just jealous that you get to do the podcast with me or something. That must be it. <laughs> Doesn't like my legs. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you have really tasty legs. Yeah, delicious yeah. legs. <clears throat> She is a little land shark, man. She, we got a blue healer, and she is, she's crazy. Like especially when it comes to food, like she'll just jump up out of my kids' hands. Like if they're not watching close enough, she's never bitten them, but like just take the food right out yeah. of her hand, like perfectly, like a shark. You know, and just all of a sudden you're like, what the hell? Where did that come from? It's insane. <laughs> so I'm sorry, I totally sidetracked us there. So uh, back to seven. So sharing the trails. I guess I guess the biggest piece here is. How are we? How do we keep our state colorful? How do we keep Colorado, Colorado? There is an essence here, and oh, yeah. like you can feel it. And how do how do we pass that down to our kids and the next generation? How do we leave the land better than we found it? And that's just it's that yeah that respect piece. The other thing too is, I've been on trails before where. Um, I've I've seen someone with a dog who's panting like crazy and they didn't have enough water. Mm. And I will just say, hey, I've got a whole giant thing here with my dog of, of water, extra water. Do you need anything? Sure. Um, I've also, oh man, oh, I just got the, the chills. This one guy just slipped on a rock and just slammed his knee into a rock, bleeding. I I had a first aid kit. I pulled off to the side. What can I do? What can I help? I had an extra shirt that he could tie around his leg. It's just that little extra kiss of kindness. What What can you do? If somebody needs something, can you help them out? Yeah. Just and that was another like that. thing I was raised with, you know, like you help. If you're in the wilderness, you ask. First, you initiate mm -hmm. some sort of conversation like, hey, how's it going? Yeah. And then 
uh, everything good or whatever, yeah. you know, just that sort of thing. And yeah, I think that's key to having your backpack. There's some staples that I do not go out with. I, it doesn't matter where I'm going. One is a knife, some sort of blade or something, mm -hmm. a first aid kit, um, depending on the weather, you know, some s sort of extra layer Always of extra clothes, layers. right? Right. And um, for me personally, a pair of socks and whatever toiletries I might need, but Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's, those are just staples. I think yeah. that anybody should go out with, um, and what should be in your pack. And I, I think I saw on the same brochure that Jeremy's got pulled up, there was another page that explained a lot of that, like what to pack, what type of season. So like, yeah, if you're traveling in from Philadelphia or DC or any of these inner, inner cities, New York, Los Angeles, wherever, mm -hmm. and you don't know. You guys have a ton of information. We have so I, much on our website. Um, what is the website, Jeremy? Is it Care for Colorado? Is that where this brochure is at? I think so, yeah. Okay. So this, yeah, this would be our Colorado tourism website. Okay. And there's great resources on here. There's videos, there's brochures. It, it's, it's real, honestly, it's a really great site. We have a bunch of stuff on Colorado Parks and Wildlife as well. This is just Colorado.com. Yeah, Colorado.com. Keep it keep it super easy for people. That's easy to remember. <laughs> but yeah, that brochure that Jeremy was just showing, and I think it's that same brochure that has, it shows you like what should be in your pack. Mm -hmm. Don't forget water. It's just a little checklist. Good mm -hmm. stuff to, to think about. You know, especially if you got kids, consider all this stuff because that's, that's a big deal when you get back there. It's not. Yeah. There's nobody there to just come to your rescue, you know. And your kids are going to learn from you. Yeah, we and live in such an age where we're used to dialing 911 and the police show right up at your door or rescue or something like that. Right. So if that's cut off, it's a completely different ball game. And that's the thing. The guy that stumbled on that rock, uh, it was very gnarly cut. No one had cell service. Yes. He had to walk down with bone showing. It was gross and... It was just one wrong step. and hey, Especially if you're a hunter. I mean, you're going to be out there, especially a bow hunter or even a rifle hunter. I mean, mm -hmm. you're out there with sharp things. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you're doing a lot of crazy stuff. Right. Sometimes it ends up happening in the dark. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, I'm not saying that you can hunt in the dark, but if you shoot something towards the end of the day, right. you're going to be cleaning it and stuff in dark and you yeah. should have something to take care of yourself. Right. And there's some great courses out there too. There's some great schools here. We've had some of those guys on the podcast. Like, mm -hmm. uh, what is Jason's um, school name? Colorado uh, CCM Survival. Jeremy, let's look yeah, that up. And then second. there's Donnie Dust. If you want to go take a, a wilderness survival cl class from him, super cool guy. I mean, he does primitive stuff. He made these arrowheads for us. Oh, like, cool. He takes it to like that next level. But still, just. Knowing a little bit of survival skills, like maybe you get caught out. I always, uh, one thing I forgot that I always travel with my pack is you can go to REI and buy these mm -hmm. and it's just a space blanket. It's a reflective heat blanket. They weigh like nothing. I don't yeah. even think it weighs an ounce. There's, they pack up super small, throw them in your backpack. If you get caught in something or maybe you get great, injured yeah, and you have to spend to the have. night, that, yeah. That thing will save your life, yeah. you know, some matches, something to build a fire. Mm -hmm. That's something that I always keep in my pack as well. So, And then any backcountry uh, excursions that people are taking, backcountry safety courses are oh, yeah, so huge. important. I took one I, this Don't be past afraid year. to hire a guide too. Like no, if it's your first time not. hunting, yeah. there's awesome outfitters here. I mean, you can go and do it on your own, but you're going to have such a better experience, probably a lot more success. Uh, you know, hire a fishing guide, mm -hmm. let them show you the ropes. And those guys are all super clued in and work with you guys, Yeah, you know, firsthand to get all the permits and everything that they need. So. And again, we want people to have a good time outside. Right. We want you to live life outside, enjoy it, have a good experience. And part of that is knowing what you're doing, learning from other people, being prepared. We don't want people to go outside and have a bad time. Sure. So... If, if we can ask questions to people and learn, that's great. Yeah. That's what we want. And I'm not saying you have to go take a survival school. I mean, you can take this as far as you want. Right. There's a ton of information out there. Just make sure you're getting the right information. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, there's, there's some online stuff that you can go through and just – Stuff to have and stuff to know. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, Jason's is uh, – what is this, Jeremy? That's Survival University. Survival University. That's what it is. 
but it's Jason Marsteiner. Okay, cool. Great guy. Good guy to learn from. He's right down in the Springs, and he does courses all over the state. Um, he does stuff with Flight for Life. I think they do <laughs> wilderness first responder courses, which I keep saying I'm going to go in and take. If I could ever get a break from podcasting, <laughs> that's one thing I want to chalk up on my outdoor resume is that. Yeah. Just in case you encounter somebody that needs help like you did. Yeah. Oh, but his his is actually Colorado Mountain Man survival okay cool yeah he's got a couple different he's he's, yeah he's busy yeah he's a busy guy awesome guy too we've had him on he was actually our first episode he was our next call when uh colorado division of wildlife couldn't make it so (laughs) (laughs) he was our well this has been so much fun i mean i'll come on anytime you want me to come on this is great i you know you guys have seven rules seven commandments seven (laughs) whatever we dubbed them as principles principles (laughs) I'm going to add a few. Can I add a few? Of course. Okay. And these are just things that, um, and I don't mean to sit here and rant, but these are things that I noticed. I've had other people notice. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when we have a guest on, we will ask them like, hey, you know, you spend a lot of time in the outdoors. Maybe they're an outfitter. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're a fly fishing guide. What do you notice? Yeah, no, it's Um, great. And this just culmination, like going back through some of those conversations. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I really noticed living up here, we have so many open space parks Mm -hmm. and um, state run parks. We have national parks. They're all stones throw from here, right? So you can access all this public land. Yeah. And I don't think that the parking lots were ever set up to to handle the volume that we saw because everybody was off of work. Right. So, and you know, this is, this also goes to, to, um, you know, impacting, wildlife with sound and that mm-hmm. sort of thing right so <laughs> i've seen people not utilizing parking spaces so they're pulling yep. up in the grass and dirt that sort of thing just destroying that the area outside of a parking lot right and then a lot of like impatient people i've seen two or three people honk you know what i mean like that's we're not in a city right yeah like, that's not the way yeah people get upset because it's overcrowded um mm-hmm. especially up here where we're at we're like a, one of the closest places to go recreate yeah. from denver so if you go into any of these parks up here on a friday or saturday there's cars lined up and down the roads mm-hmm. you know just be respectful of uh, yeah. what you're doing and what I, I know at certain points they were closing some of the parks up here and they mm-hmm. had rangers but they couldn't police i mean some of these parks have several different parking lots right because you can right. access them from from different sides and you can get a ticket if you park in an area where you're not supposed to we definitely do not want you driving up on vegetation and plants that is not acceptable that's not the way the reality is if if you show up to a busy trailhead and the parking lot is full, then plan better next time. That sounds harsh, but it's part of learning and getting there earlier. Does that mean turn around and go home or that time or wait for a parking spot? You could, you could circle back around. If the other thing again is that code trucks app is to look to see what's local, what's around. I think it's being flexible and adapting to this trailhead's packed right now, what else can I go to? I still wanna spend time outside. That's the thing about, again, about our state. There's so many things to do. You can't just be set on one thing. And if you are set on that one thing, it's that knowing before you go of maybe you gotta get there earlier. Sure. But just to pull up and park wherever you want or to honk at people, that's not and the way the parking lots tend to get loud too you know so yeah. that's gonna drive any sort of wildlife mm-hmm. out too um, yeah so yeah that's one thing um i'm a fisherman i like to fly fish uh, my kids love to fish i grew up fishing and um i want my kids grandchildren or my kids yes my kids grandchildren to be able to fish that's beautiful future generations I'm noticing Colorado is a great state. It's an mm-hmm. awesome trout fishing. There's a ton of other fish that you can go, you know, like bass and, and all these other different species. But uh, I spend most of my time in high alpine lakes, rivers, mm-hmm. streams. Um, you guys stock a lot of fish. You know, I, I've i noticed fish fishing since I was a kid and mm-hmm. how our rivers and streams are being impacted are tenfold. 
And um, I'm the last guy that wants to see a season come into that. But yeah. there's a reason why there's seasons in other states. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I think just the the principal rules of, you know, making sure you have a fishing license. Yes. Number one, right? Yes. Because then that way you guys can actually track how many people are out there in these rivers and streams and, right. and how it's being impacted. Well, right? our anglers help conserve and pay for fish being stocked sure. into the reservoirs and the lakes. And so that's the conservation right there of balancing that outdoor recreation with conservation. So those licenses are very important. So our Not angling, to mention yeah. it's, is it a federal offense if you're caught without a hunting or a fishing license? I mean, it's considered poaching, right? Yeah. I, I, I yeah. Yeah. I, you have to have a license. Okay. Um, and then, you know, know the regulations. There's so many different regulations. Mm -hmm. Some of them start at, it's not just, there can be several different regulations Mm -hmm. on one river or stream. Right. And it depends. And it's pretty cut and dry. I mean, Mm -hmm. anywhere that you can buy a fishing license, you can also pick up the regs are normally right there. Right. Walk into any of the thousand fly shops around here. Yep. They, they all have rags sitting on their counters. You guys are really good about keeping those stocked. Mm. You can also download it online. It's all online. Um, I always check before we go. I check every season because they change. Yeah. We have a fishing report, too, that comes okay. out biweekly. Oh, so, really? I yeah. So people can um, stay up to date with the latest news for anything with that for state parks as well. And where would you find that? So to find our fishing reports, the best way to find them would be to go to our website, which is cpw.state dot co dot us okay that's not easy to remember i i would just google colorado parks and wildlife and that's what i figured out every time that i go yeah i'm sure it's in my browser history from getting (laughs) hunting licenses and stuff which if can you do anything for me on the draw i mean since we're doing the podcast can you like i'm staying out of that brother you're on your own man (laughs) that's a lottery system can't play favorites all right cool i just thought i'd ask while you were here but uh okay so you know Back to regulations on the water. Mm -hmm. Now, great. You're out there. You're having a great time. Catch a fish. Mm -hmm. Everybody loves their Instagram photos, but please do it properly. Mm -hmm. You can see when people do it properly online. I can tell. And I get pissed off when I don't see them doing it properly. Yeah. Keep the fish wet. You know, um, make sure they they need to be in water to live. So I... I can't tell you how many countless times I've seen people holding up dry fish, and it, oh, it makes me upset. Yeah. Um, and I think that's just another thing that boils down to education. You know, if you don't know, you know, go out. That's where it comes into, like, hiring a guide maybe if it's your first time. Yeah. You're going to have a lot better experience. You're going you're gonna to learn the ways to do it and not to do it. Right. And, uh, yeah. And you don't want to be that person. That's right. And then also – Key, 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 especially once it gets hot in those summer months, check, you know, water temperatures, Mm -hmm. the CSF, you know, the water flows. That's Mm -hmm. super important. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, I just, I want future generations to be able to fish. And I fear at the rate that we're going right now, Mm -hmm. if you guys are either going to step in and manage it the way it needs to be managed and you're going to have to have a permit to go to every single river or lake or something eventually. And I don't want to see that happen either. Right. Or... You know, if we all just take care we, of it, yeah, maybe we, we can all enjoy other. it. Yeah, that's so. what's good about this podcast. Yeah, no, that's for what, the listeners out there. <laughs> do your that's part. why we're trying to fill the gap. Help us out, friends. So number nine, this is number nine. Okay, and then I'm done. <laughs> I don't think I have a number ten unless Jeremy's got one. <laughs> but uh, Jeremy, I hope you have. Hold one. on, I'll work on. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy's got a lot. Uh, number nine for me is hunting. Um, Please, please, if you're just getting into hunting, get some education in it. Yes. Um, Super important to me. This is super important. And then, you know, the other thing that I've noticed is um, being a native and growing up here, I have gotten a lot more criticism Mm -hmm. and all the hate mail that I get on this podcast is because of hunting. And I'm okay with getting hate mail, but... Please remember this, that um, hunting is, just be educated in it. I, you know, there's a lot of people that, um, that think it's just for the sport. And I think it goes a lot further and deeper than that. For me, it's more of a foraging. 
knowing mm-hmm. where my meat came from. Exactly. I'm a meat eater. You yeah. know, I think there's a big disconnect between people and food right now. Right. And uh, because food is so, you can go mm-hmm. walk into any grocery store and buy it, whatever meat mm-hmm. um, that you want, vegetables, whatever. Right. Um, me personally, it, it's a that's what it's about for me. Mm-hmm. I can't speak for all hunters, and right. I don't know. But uh, you know, I think another thing that's super important here is there's a huge part of the state revenue that funds. Colorado Division of Wildlife. Yes, it does. Conservation. Yes, it does. Um, keeping the animals healthy, Correct. right? Correct. Um, education mm-hmm. to to educate people. Bridges that cross streams. Exactly. That's all paid for. Right. Correct me if I'm From wrong. From our hunters and anglers. Hunting, Correct. anglers, that Correct. sort of thing, right? And I think that is a huge piece is people, we have to have respect for each other. People enjoy the outdoors in different ways. If someone doesn't want to go hunting, that's okay. But there are other people who genuinely enjoy it, and there's a lot to it. It's an outdoor heritage. Hunting's been passed down through generations and generations. It's how we used to survive. It yeah. It's not like... Right. So, But there's a huge piece of hunting that goes to conservation. It keeps our wildlife populations healthy. It helps fund conservation research projects. It's very important. And so there has to be a level of respect and just coexistence. That's yeah. what it is. That's what it is. I couldn't agree more with you. So I'm going to stop ranting now. <laughs> but <laughs> Those are good rants. But yeah, no, these are all good things. <laughs> and I think the reason why I'm backing this and having you guys on the podcast and the whole reason I started this podcast mm-hmm. is I'm trying to see into the future, you know, and I, yeah. I'm trying to make an impact and... The only way that I know how to do it is this. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, uh, so I urge people. I hope we didn't get too boring on this. <laughs> We're gonna have you back. This was awesome. <laughs> this was so much fun. And the next one will be <laughs> a little bit more fun and not so like <laughs> rules, 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 rules. Right. I and I don't that. feel like we really got that too bad on this one. But I, I really appreciate what you guys are doing, and I'm excited about this week. Um, and I'm excited that you guys are doing this and stepping up to the plate so that we can ensure this for future generations, you know, because we're seeing such an influx in this yeah. state. We're seeing people more tourism. Right. Um, so I urge if you're listening outside uh, of the state of Colorado, which a lot of our listeners do, you know, even if you're going into Wyoming, Montana, anywhere else, I mean, you guys have great information. It, just doesn't have to be Colorado either. No, right? it's just so. it's public lands, respect for each other, sure. our outdoor community, and yeah, it's it, it's all of that. It's so. conservation, and I think it's taking action. We we're here. We're talking about it. We're thinking about it. We're having really great conversations, little acts of kindness along the way. All of that helps. Yeah, Everything that people do helps. Yeah. So what's all going on this week during Care for Colorado? I'm sure you guys are doing a ton of media stuff, not Mm -hmm. only my podcast. Mm -hmm. What Are there any events? Are you guys doing any sort of... So our biggest thing is it's been a big social media push. So we're going to be using that hashtag Care for Colorado. What we'd like to see is our outdoor community showing conservation in action, picking up trash, staying on the trail, leaving wildflowers alone, just taking the pictures of it. Uh, wildlife from a distance, just really building this buzz around it of how do we care for Colorado? So really just showing conservation in action. We're definitely going to try to get some media out to different parks. We're going to talk about recreating responsibly. I do want to give a plug to everyone now that the boating ramps are opening up, anglers are out, weather conditions are good. Wasn't there somebody that just there was an accident last weekend or there was at Cherry Creek State Park we had a drowning. Oh, yeah. So we want to be care we, anyone wear your life vests. I just bought a stand up paddleboard and I'm so excited about it. But I have so to do awesome. so much research to figure out. I already have my life vest, I know, but I have to look up water conditions. I'm going to have to pay attention to the weather and just I'm struck by lightning. <laughs> yeah, I want to be very, very careful. So, again, I'm one of those people that's trying something new for this season for the first time. And so just boating safety in general, I really want to plug that. Oh, you just come up right across the street from us. 
<laughs> you jump right across the street, hang yeah. out. <laughs> yeah. Come up. We'll go paddleboard together. I would love to do that. Yeah. I I'll would show love you the to ro- do that. Have you been before? Or? No, but if you can teach, you oh, know. Oh, I can. Yeah, I used to do it in the ocean. I would love to do that yeah. with you guys. See, okay. learning the way. Sure. Sh- Literally sh- across sharing. the street from a lake. Yeah. I would do that. Definitely. I'm super excited. Yeah, let's do it. I'll, I'll show you the ropes. <laughs> this is great. I, I'm really glad that you guys are doing this and raising some awareness and coming up with all these different things. If there's anything that we can do to help you in the future, we're on board too. So Awesome. Thank you um, so much. I know Colorado Parks and Wildlife is extremely busy. You guys always are, especially mm-hmm. since this pandemic started. Yeah. Um, I know just talking to some of the other agents, like some of the phone calls that you guys get, it's not comical. It's just people don't know. Yeah. Um, what... I think this is key. What to maximize your guys' time and and just to educate people in general. Mm. What are what are some of the common things that you they're the most common things that you guys get calls about that you don't want people to report mm-hmm. or maybe what would you like to see people reporting? Okay. A little bit more. I have a, a fun, And I'm sure that yeah. we could go this could be a whole podcast. I was say, so let's oh just take some we need to drink ones. whiskey with this one because <laughs> I've got, boy, do I have stories. I bet. Um, the one that comes to mind is a woman called me about 10 o'clock at night. And she's freaking out because a bird had fallen out of a tree. She went and got the baby bird, brought it into her home, and put it in with her turtle. And it, she was freaking out. What do I do? What do I do? And it was just... First of all, you should leave it alone. You should not have picked up the bird. You should not have brought it in. Definitely don't put it in with your turtle. They're not buddies. Like that poor turtle is probably looking at the bird thinking, what the hell is this thing, you know? Right. And then you got the bird freaking out of, I was outside with my mother. Now I'm in this cage with a turtle. So it's that leave young wildlife alone. Don't pick up. you. Some people think they're rescuing young wildlife. They're not. They're orphaning them because then we have to find a rehab facility. Sometimes we can't find a rehab facility and the animals get put down. So the best thing to do is just leave them alone. Those are definitely some calls. Um, And letting nature run its course, right? Like you guys. Yes. I mean, obviously, if an animal's in serious distress, Mm -hmm. you guys are really good about taking care of that. But do you want to call every time that you see something hit on the road or i mean because that's probably the most common right? yeah no i we don't i mean yeah it's got to kind of run its course like if if you see an animal blatantly in danger give us a call so our experts can come and evaluate the situation sure but when people get involved and touch animals and try putting them in their cars, it makes it so much harder. And those are the heartbreaking calls because you, it's harder to save the animals at that point. So, yeah. And then, uh, you know, what should you report? Say, I mean, we all live, there's a ton of people that live in mountain communities. Mm -hmm. We even see it below the front range. Mm -hmm. Um, if you see a predator in your neighborhood, a large predator, bears, mm-hmm. mountain lions, anything like that, you guys want people to report that or? Yes, we would appreciate that. Okay. Yeah. Because uh, we want to, we have next door, which allows us to send out alerts to everyone in the neighborhood to make sure that they stay in their houses, locking their doors. Again, bears are smart. They know how yeah. to get indoors. They can open the door. So we, we would like to know that we want to get those reports so that we can keep everybody else safe. Awesome. Uh, is there anything that we cover, didn't cover today or that you want to cover? Um, I'm sure that we're going to be doing more of these in the future. I would it love to. Like. This is I fun. I hope you had a good time. <laughs> I had so much fun. We enjoyed having you on <laughs> and uh, excited for the future here at the mountainside with Colorado Parks and Wildlife. Too, yeah. So. Anything with your listeners, too. Anything that there's topics that you all want to talk about. Let's... Send us some Q&A questions. Yeah. Um, you can either get a hold of us through the website uh, the mountainside podcast.com. Um, we're pretty active on Instagram. We do check all of our DMS on there for right now. Um, so if you direct message us on Instagram, the next time we have these guys on or there's a question or there's something that you think we should have covered. I mean, there's so many rabbit holes you can go down (laughs) when it comes to parks and wildlife (laughs) and, what you guys do. I mean, we could just do podcast after podcast. Yeah, a whole um, Q&A. Right. <laughs> Maybe we'll do that sometime. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, no, we uh, 
I really appreciate your time. I know you're super busy. We're going to get you out of here. And um, thank you so much for coming in. Yeah. Before we jump off, um, if people wanted to contact you for a media thing, mm -hmm. how would they get a hold of you? Do you have an Instagram? Sure. Something? So to contact me directly. So again, I'm a public information officer. So if you need anything, I'm here to work directly with the public. I can give my email address, but then also... Don't do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm give on them call a, like 24-7. Well, I guess you can if you want, so, yeah. I mean, give them a website or some, or a general one. You guys are really good with phone calls. That's actually how I got a hold of you yeah, for this podcast. I would, I would I would urge anybody, if if you have a question for CPW, mm -hmm. they always pick up the phone, which is super cool. We so, will pick up the phone. Uh, I love that because <laughs> I'm old school when it comes to that. So <laughs> so give them a call. Um, you can easily find their number. I'm, I can't even remember the website. Just Google Colorado Parks and Wildlife. <laughs> Um, but you guys have Instagram page, right? We do. But you're broken down by regions or something, right? Is that? Our main statewide one is at uh, CO Parks Wildlife. Okay, perfect. And we monitor that and loved, would love to hear from people. Go follow that because you guys yeah. put new stuff up on yes, there too. Yes, come like, follow be us. Be careful of that. Yeah, yeah for, for Care for Colorado Week, look at our posts, reshare, tag us. We'd love that. Awesome. All right. <laughs> thank you again, Bridget. I hope you had fun. And uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. Stay safe out there. Know before you go. Check this before. Check this stuff out before you uh, <laughs> hit the trails or parks. And uh, we really appreciate your time. And thanks for having me. Uh, this was wishing so much fun. you luck this week. So <laughs> thank you. Appreciate it. Jeremy, you all good back there. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for listening to the Mountainside Podcast. If you haven't had a chance to do this already, please take a moment, follow, like, subscribe, or rate on whatever platform you catch the Mountainside Podcast at. Also, if you'd like some more information on upcoming episodes, safety tips, access to all of our affiliates, and all the badass discounts that we get here at the Mountainside Podcast, check out themountainsidepodcast.com. We wanted to let you know that the Mountainside Podcast is now available on Patreon. If you'd like access to bonus footage, behind-the-scenes content, ad-free listening, and much more, simply find the link in our bio or visit patreon.com forward slash the mountainside.